everybody. Welcome to Engage eLearning. Uh, we have, oh, I see some people joining. Great. Thank you for joining. Um, this is Airport Designs and Communications, and we have a very special guest with us tonight. Uh, but while we get started, I'm going to go ahead and launch our first poll before I introduce our special guest. Um, so here we go. Have you observed operations at an airport? So Kelly Yost, you're our special guest. Do you want to give a little clue of what operations at an airport means while I get the poll going? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I would say when you observe operations at an airport, you might be standing at a small airport watching airports or airplanes take off and land. If you're at a large airport, the same thing, but you're going to see a lot more security. You're going to see a, a lot of fencing and uh, a large airfield and a lot of a lot of things happening. So it's fun either way, though. At small airports or big airports, you're you're seeing airplanes taking off and and land. Excellent, awesome. Thank you so much. I see some polls coming in, so we're actually fifty fifty right now. Although there's a few more people who could answer the poll if you'd like to. Oh, I'm already seeing reactions too. That's super exciting. So 50-50, half of you have and half of you have not yet. So just a little fun fact. Um, I When I visit the airport, I can see people all the time. They're parked and they're just watching people take off or they're watching what's happening. Um, so you can look at a, you know, look at your local map and search for an airport and you may be able to find a little place to do some observations and uh, you can learn a lot from it. It's really surprising how much you can learn just from taking some time, maybe take a snack and um, watching what happens at the airport. So thanks everybody for answering our poll. Um, I'll leave that up just for one more second and we'll jump into our customs. As always, we wanna respect everyone. WAI is recording, so we can post this on YouTube later. Um, if you have questions, please use the Q&A. You can put the question there. Uh, there is no such thing as a wrong question. So please, please, please use that Q&A. We um, do want you to be thoughtful about those questions. Like if someone asked a question, stay tuned, listen. And then if you have a follow-up question, you can send it. Um, raise your hand. You can always ask a question live to us. Oh, and I see you've got the next one, which is use those reactions. Um, we love your reactions, so please engage, send the reactions. And most important, we're here to have fun tonight. And then with us, we have our agenda. So we're doing our introductions now. I have our very special guest specialist, Kelly Yost. Um, she is a professional engineer. Her job is to design airports, and she's going to tell you all about that. We're going to learn about airport markings. We are going to build an airport together using airport markings. And, and then I have to tell you about our FAA airport design challenge. Um, we'll wrap up with closing announcements and any questions you have. So on the call tonight, this is me, Annie Steikleather. I'm the manager of youth programs for Women in Aviation International. I have Kelly Murphy with us. Kelly, do you want to say hi real quick? Yes, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are around the world. We're so pleased that you're here to learn about airports. And just like Annie said, whether you live near an airport that's large or small, it's a wonderful place and a wonderful sense of community to learn all about aviation. So I encourage you to check it out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelly. And Kelly is our Director of Communications. She works on Aviation for Women and Aviation for Girls magazine and is our Editor-in-Chief. Um, and Jabali may be on the call with us. She may be on the attendee side, but Jabali Kandula is our Associate Editor. Um, she helps send all the emails, does our social media too. So we're so grateful to have an amazing team. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce Kelly. Um, Kelly is a professional engineer with CNS Companies, and she's also on the FAA Women in Aviation Advisory Board. Um, this is a really special board that I hope that, Kelly, you'll share a little bit about that, too, and the work that you've done there. 
And um, we have an intro video. So Kelly, do you want to say hi real quick and then I'll play the video? Sure. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to talk about my career and hopefully give some people ideas about something you might want to do in the future. Um, it's all about building airports, fixing airports, and and all of the things we need to be able to take off and land at those airports. So thanks for having me. Uh, we're so thankful that you're here with us, and I'm super excited to learn more. So here's a little intro from Kelly. My name is Kelly Yost. And uh oh, my name is Kelly. Let's try that again. All right. Oh no. Are you having sound issues too? Yep. Not okay. coming through. Let me try one more time. I'm going to stop and then I'm going to share screen. And I'm going to mute this. And I'll just say, Annie, this is a video that. Oh, maybe it's going to work. No. Oh. Is it working? No, it's stuck. Now it's going, but it's. Sound. Okay. Yeah. Um, how about we just play it without sound? Does that work? Let's try that. All right. Do you want to do a little narrative? Tell you what it is. Yeah. yeah that would be great. <laughs> so I was I was lucky enough to be a part of this video through one of the ladies from the FAA Women in Aviation Advisory Board, Amy Spower. She connected me to Hemlock Films, and they're doing a series um, on all different people in aviation, and it's called Why I Fly. And even though it's called Why I Fly, it's about all kinds of people in aviation, not just pilots. So I talked about my job in aviation engineering, and it was fun. I've never done a video like this before, so definitely not any kind of an actress or anything, but... They just uh, had me take them out to a couple job sites and we talked about the construction work that was going on. Um, this is a small airport where I actually learned how to fly um, because even though I'm an engineer, I still did want to get my pilot's license. And so that project was pretty cool to be able to work on at my home airport where I learned how to fly. And then some of these other images are from Detroit Metro Airport, It's a, which is a large hub airport. It's, it's a lot bigger than the other one you saw. You can see the airplanes are a lot bigger and you can see some of the construction going on there and all of the gates and all of the planes and all of the activity um, going on there with all the ground vehicles. Um, and then this is back to, this is Plymouth Metatol Airport. So you can see, um, that's when I got my pilot's license there. That was the little Cessna 152 that I learned how to fly in. And kind of the same thing, even though it's a lot smaller of an airport, all of those pavement surfaces, paint marking, signage, all of that stuff needs to be, you know, upgraded and fixed at times. And so that's part of my job is, is making sure that we have money to do those projects, um, helping clients to get those projects done and to make sure that we've got a, a good airport that people can use and people can fly from. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fun job. And that's what I'm talking about in this video. So hopefully that's helpful. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for switching that up. So I saw Amelia Earhart and wow. Kelly. What is she an uh, inspiration to you? She is. Um, yep. And there's a picture of the, the board as well. They are oh. also all an inspiration to me and definitely role models and people that I look up to. They're from all different parts of the industry. Um, and in my presentation, I do talk about Amelia Earhart too, because I just remember um, in fifth grade, learning about her and, you know, we learned about a lot of men in history a lot of times. And so to learn about a woman that had done all of these amazing things, it was something new. And I was just amazed by her and inspired by her. And that's kind of where I first thought, maybe I want to be a pilot. And, you know, maybe that, I want that to be my career. Um, that's what got me started in aviation and then kind of went from there instead became a civil engineer. But and you can see some nice crumbling concrete there in the picture. But, you know, that's what we need to fix. And um, there's, I'd like to do some outreach events too. So that's what some of those other pictures are. But definitely love Amelia Earhart. And there's a lot of other women um, aviators that are, that are inspirations as well. And that's, that's my daughter there. I like to take her to some 
different uh, girls in aviation events at times. And now she's 16, so she's a little older in that, than what she was in that picture. But <laughs> yeah, check out that Why I Fly series. There's a, there's a whole bunch of films that they've done and you can get on YouTube and look at any, any of those videos. And there's some really, really cool jobs out there. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, we really, really appreciate it. And thanks for narrating it for us today. <laughs> no problem. Um, I saw some Girls in Aviation Day pictures in there too. So that's always <laughs> fun. Yeah. Do you mind if I read one of the questions we have in the chat? Oh, please read the question. Yeah. So Kelly, one of our uh, listeners would like to know why or when did you know that you wanted to be an engineer? Good question. Um, I don't think I figured that out until probably my junior or senior year in high school. That's when I was trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. And like I said, I, I thought maybe I wanted to be a pilot, but then after I thought about it a little more, um, my dad was, was in the engineering business and construction. And so he had a lot of influence on me. And in the end, um, I decided that engineering was the way to go. I liked to play with Legos. I liked to tear things apart when I was a kid. I would take my toys apart and try to figure out how to put them back together. Um, and so engineering was a good fit for me. And I always liked, you know, math and science. And um, it's, it's, it's all about problem solving. So I would say, you know, right about that time, late in my high school years is when I, when I decided that. Excellent. Thanks so much. Great question. Keep the questions rolling, everybody. Um, so Kelly, would you tell us about CNS companies? Uh, we'd yeah, love definitely. So and you can go to the next slide too, but I would talk about CNS. Um, so I've been here for about, it'll be 18 years this year. Um, so when I got my first job, you know, I made that decision in high school, went to college at Michigan Tech, which I got my banner right there. It's uh, an engineering school up in the upper peninsula of Michigan and decided to go into civil engineering. There's all kinds of different engineering you can do. And CNS has multiple mechanical engineering, electrical, um, civil, environmental. CNS has all of those. And we do a lot of infrastructure work. So fixing roads and bridges and buildings and airports and all of those different things. And so we have an office in Syracuse, New York, that is our headquarters. And I work here in the Detroit area as an engineer with CNS. And I will talk a little bit about some projects and maybe some careers in aviation as we go along here. But yeah, here's just some information about me. Um, born and raised in Michigan. I've lived here all my life, grew up here, went to college here, got a job here. Um, it is a great state. And like I was talking about before, just loved aviation from that young age of I just remember fifth grade for some reason with that Amelia Earhart report that I had to do and came to school dressed like her and had to had to do a report and talk about her and her life. And uh, and then from there, um, took my first flight out to California and my parents put me on a plane by myself and I just stared out the window the entire time. <laughs> I remember it was a good, clear day. And I remember the pilot saying, if you look out your window, you can see the Grand Canyon. And I thought, well, how cool is that? See the Grand Canyon from the air. So that, again, it kind of nurtured that aviation love. Um, but then, like I said, did go to Michigan Tech for civil engineering, and I found that they had an airport design class. So I thought that was great. Okay, I can do civil engineering, and I can also do aviation. So um, loved that class, loved that professor. He really was helpful and was a mentor to me and helped me find companies that would do aviation. And in the end, my first job, I couldn't get a job in aviation. I ended up working in highways first, but it brought me to the Bureau of Aeronautics at MDOT. So from there, I came to CNS. I did end up getting my pilot's license, like I said, and um, that brings me to where I am today. Well, you can go that, to the next slide. I okay. will. We have a question that's kind of related to what you just said. Um, this is from Danielle. Did you think of any other job? And if so, what were they before you went into your Oh, career? I thought of lots of other jobs. I thought about being a pilot. I thought I wanted to be an artist at one point in time. <laughs> um, I think I did want to be an actor too. I took like a drama class in, in junior high and 
Um, so I went through a lot of different thoughts and ideas about what I wanted to do. So I do want to make that point that you, you may not know right away. You try out some different things, take different classes, you talk to people in different careers. Um, I thought about being a surveyor too, which is kind of related to, see it, to civil engineering. But yeah, I thought about a lot of different things, but I'm happy with my choice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so these are a um, couple pictures. There's, there's a big sign there from, that's also from Detroit Metro Airport. You can see how big it is with us standing next to it. And also the pipe, um, that's a big concrete pipe that goes in the ground. Um, so we do a lot of those infrastructure projects and a lot of the work we do, you don't even see because it's underground. It's carrying, pipes are carrying water or we're putting in utilities for electric and um, gas and all the different utilities that we need to have. And so that's what civil engineering is a lot about all of those things like pavement and dirt and rocks and flowing water and going on site visits. And uh, we do get involved in a lot of construction activities as well, both at general aviation airports and commercial service airports too. Oh, excellent. Thank you. And this sign, do you want to actually, while we're here and it's a really good example, um, explain what it means for our attendees? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so those numbers definitely mean something. It means four left, 22 right is the runway. So that's the direction of the runway. And then A2 is the taxiway the where you're, you're gonna be located. So and you'll notice that the, the letters are different colors. So the taxiway is usually yellow and runway markings, if you're looking at a, a runway, are usually white. So it kind of matches up so you know that the white letters are associated with the runway and the yellow letters are associated with the taxiway. Yep, awesome, thank you, Kelly. I just thought it was a great, <laughs> great <laughs> example. Yeah, because we're gonna be building some of those later, right? Yes. Yeah, and this is just another picture, same information about civil engineering and stuff, but that's, uh, picture of a big excavator that you'll see out on a construction site. And um, those teeth on that excavator actually have to be replaced because when they dig, they kind of wear down a little bit and they have to be replaced at different times. So I have one in my office, you kind of can't see it, but uh, I, th I think that's pretty cool. Oh, that is really cool. I didn't realize that they had to be replaced, but it makes sense. Like yeah. you have to, um, sometimes you have to sharpen things to make them useful again. Exactly. Now, do you operate these or have you in the past? I do not. I wish I could say I did. It's something that's uh, something I want to do at some point in time. Um, but that's that's another job. If people are interested in, you know, not sitting behind a desk and wanting to be outside and active and not in an office, you know, that's another job opportunity. You could work as a construction worker on construction sites at airports. I love that. I love that. Excellent. Yeah, so this is uh, one of the projects that was highlighted in that first video. This is Plymouth Metatol Airport. Um, and you can try to play that other video and see if that works, Annie. Um, this is the cool thing that I love about my job is I was a project manager for this project, which was rehabilitating the runway 1836 there, which is a north-south runway, and the taxiway, taxiway Alpha which is parallel to the runway. And so that was in pretty bad shape. And you can see the difference in the new pavement and the old pavement there on the apron. So all that new pavement had to get new paint and they didn't have, have lights that we were fixing for this particular project, but a lot of times we will fix the lights too. And then in that video, um, I got to go up in a helicopter just to see the project after it was completed and take some pictures and some videos. and. So that was a neat experience to be able to, to see the project from up in the air. That's really cool. Um, while we're on here, this is a good example. Is the runway really 1-8 or does that have to do with something specific? And 3-6, you said uh, north-south. It is. Yeah. So 1-8, if you think of a compass, mm -hmm. and you think of north being zero, and then go all the way around in a circle is up back up to 360. So 360 would be north and then 180 would be down the south to the bottom. So that's what those numbers mean something. If you add a zero to those, it tells you which, which direction you'd be going. 
Yes. So every runway, you typically would add a zero, and that's the direction on the compass. Yeah. Uh, and then we don't pronounce it 18. We say one eight. One eight. Yep. Or three six. Yep. Exactly. And these are a couple other lot bigger projects. Grand Rapids, Gerald R. Ford International Airport. We did a, a large apron expansion and to make room for eventually they expanded their concourse for the terminal. So we worked on the apron and then the building was was built out after that. And then at Detroit Metro Airport, that was that was the largest project I've ever worked on. Three left, 21 right. Um, that's a picture up in the upper right there. And you can see everything was torn apart. <laughs> and there a lot of utilities, a lot of new pavement lighting, pavement markings, all of that had to be had to be fixed up. Oh, very cool. And for people Fun to work on. Yeah. That may not know, what is the apron? The apron is where the, the airplanes park. A lot of people still say tarmac. I think that's still a term that um, people use, but apron is, yeah, where the, where, the, where the airplanes actually park. So that is not the taxiway, but so it would be considered kind of a, a non-movement area? Yeah. Yeah. And that's another one there with the, with the business jet. That's also at Grand Rapids Airport. Um, that was a nice brand new parking apron that we built so that Avflight could have a place to put their airplanes. Oh, very nice. Thank you. And this, I don't know if there's any way to ask people, but maybe they can just look at these two pictures. This is that project at Detroit Metro I was talking about. Um, the upper one is the original runway. And then the lower picture is what it looked like after it was completed. So you can kind of see some differences there. Um, if you notice that taxiway down on the bottom actually was brand new. If you look at the top picture, it's not there. And then on the bottom picture, we added, we added that, yep, right there. That's a brand new taxiway that we built. And you can see some of the geometry and the shape of the pavement is a little bit different. And so you can see that there were quite a few changes on that project. And, and that's why that was, was so large and, and quite expensive, but definitely a fun project to work on. Yeah, absolutely. If you notice some other changes, you could always put it in the Q&A and we could read them. Uh, but very right. interesting. It's also interesting to see the difference in, uh, it looks like, was there some water here? Did you have to build that it out. does look it does look like there's uh there's something there and i can't remember if that was it, usually if you have wetlands and things like that you have to work around those or you have to mitigate them um things like that those are environmental concerns that also another another job to mention environmental engineering you've got to work around environmental concerns as well when you're working on these types of projects yeah absolutely So this is just to talk about some of the different career opportunities in aviation. I'm a consultant slash engineer, um, but you can also work for public entities like uh, the Department of Transportation or a city. Um, there's contractors, like I said, with the construction work, um, working for airlines or aircraft manufacturers that have actually build the airplanes. And then innovative and new technology. There's There are drones, there are electric aircraft, and I think there's a there's another picture that shows a uh, zip line. If you click to the next one, um, that is a pretty cool company that's doing some really neat things. Um, I actually get to go visit their facility in Arkansas, but they're delivering packages to people at their home. So you can order online and then have your package delivered and dropped in your front yard. So wow. if you we're looking for Mark Rober. That's who the guy is there. Um, he does a, a really cool YouTube video about Zipline and talks more about all the work that they're doing. So all kinds of career opportunities in different areas of aviation. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much. And this is just more, more ideas and different things within aviation. And you'll see engineer in there, but you also see different pilot careers, uh, even food services or law related services, anything from working at an airport as an airport manager to a flight attendant or a ticket agent. There's just so many different opportunities. If you're interested in aviation at all, you can pretty much find 
um, something that would be interesting to you. It's like, Kelly, what's your phrase? Kelly Murphy. <laughs> so many opportunities. Yes, so many opportunities. So many. Yeah. And you can find them all in aviation. And um, Kelly Yost, is this something that you have worked with the FAA uh, Women in Aviation Advisory Board on too? Yes, this actually comes right out of the report. Um, if I don't know if that's something that could be shared, but there is um, our report was done in 2022. It includes this list of different careers and that's available online if, if uh, people are interested in looking at that report. Yeah, it's a really important report. So um, I encourage you to think about it because um, we don't think about how much aviation really plays a role in all of our daily lives. And um, we need to work on building those careers and uh, building interests. So anything everybody can do to help is super important. So Definitely. I think we're at a time for questions. What questions do we have for Kelly Yost? I have a question, um, Kelly. So, can you give us a little bit of like what your day to day, you know, maybe like a, I don't know if it's a day in your life or, um, what, what does that look like for you? Do you do you go to the airport? Yeah. I mean, you got a helicopter ride on one. <laughs> about that. Yeah, um, I would say the one of the things I love about the job is every day is different. I will, I'll give you an example of if I'm working on a design project, um, a lot of times I don't really do CAD work anymore, um, computer aided design, but I used to. So earlier in my career, I used to get on the computer and design things on the computer. And so we have a lot of people that, that do that now. Um, and that's how we design our projects, but I'm managing those people now. So we'll go out in the field, we'll go to an airport we'll have a set of plans and we'll see if our plans match what's actually out in the field. And you'll, you'll realize that things are always different when you get out there. There's things that are missing from the plans that you have to add. <laughs> and it's a lot of back and forth. It's designing on the computer, but then going out in the real world and seeing what's really there. And it's a lot of talking to airport managers and understanding what they need, what kind of projects are, are priorities for them. Um, it's a lot of figuring out funding where, well, how are they gonna pay for these projects? You know, talking to the FAA, talking to the state agencies, coming up with a plan for paying for the project, and then not only designing it and coming up with the funding, but then also on the construction side, we're out there in the field, uh, making sure that the design is being followed and that the work is getting done correctly. And, you know, do, doing things like paying the contractor, making sure they're following all the requirements for the federal funding and all that, those sorts of things. And then, you know, sometimes it's just a day in the office. It might be meetings internally with CNS, or it might be meetings with airport clients. Um, it's all different. And sometimes I'll just get a call from an airport and they'll have a problem. And I've never heard of this problem before. And we'll have to find an answer. So definitely a lot of problem solving and um, really interesting things because there's all kinds of stuff going on at airports. Oh, excellent. Thank you. We have we have three questions in the queue. Um, one is from Amira. What's the most difficult part of your job? Gosh, the most difficult part. Um, I'd say sometimes just getting projects done um, because you do run into issues. You know, every every project has its own issues. So it's kind of just working through those problems and figuring out the right answer for each one, whether it's how do we pay for it or we have a drainage issue. Airports are flat, right? So where is the water gonna go? It's always it's always something we gotta figure out. Um, so I think while problem solving is is fun, it's it also can be difficult at the same time. Excellent, thank you. Um, we also, wondered when was the runway remodeled so i'm thinking it was the comparison runway um when was that completed um that would have been done in i want to say 2022 something like that 21 22 so a, a couple years ago um but it was an old one it, it's been there for years and years like decades and they finally finally reconstructed it oh very nice 
how long does it take from, you know, say the, the airport saying, hey, we need a new airport to it's complete, <laughs> roughly? Oh, boy, it depends. I mean, a small, I'll, I'll just talk about those two air, two airports that were in the, the video um, at a place, a general aviation airport with small Cessna 152s that's got one runway that's, you know, 2,500 feet long. We might be able to do that in a year. We might get the design early in January, do the design in a few months, and then we put it out to bid and get contractors prices for that. And then we might construct it in two months. So something like that small, you could you could get it done in probably less than a year, like eight months to a year. Um, you go to something like Detroit, and that design process is typically a lot longer. You're working with a lot of different entities and working with an air traffic control tower and airlines at a large airport versus at a small airport. You don't have to do that. So design might be one to two years and then construction might be another one to two years. So I'd say anywhere from two to four years for something, a really, really large project. Excellent. Thanks for sharing. Um, how many people do you need to build an airport? Boy, I don't even know if I can guess that one. <laughs> Again, it depends on the size of the project. Um, sometimes our design teams are a project manager and an engineer. Sometimes, you know, just two people. Um, that might be a, for a simple fence project, let's say. Um, but then when you go to a really large project, it might be a team of 50 people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're doing the design, but then you've also got the construction folks too. So then you've probably got hundreds of people that are working on that. So it really, it really varies and depends if it's design or construction and if it's a small project or a big project. Thank you. Uh, this is from Breslin. How long do you work each day? It depends. All my answers are that depends. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, if, if, if something's, if we're really, really busy, sometimes I'll work 10 or 12 hours a day. Or if I'm traveling, if I'm, you know, having to drive to an airport that's two or three hours away, I might drive, go to the airport and then drive home. Um, but I'd say, you know, a typical day is, is like an eight hour day, you know, eight to five is pretty typical for, for engineering. Um, but again, if it's, if it's busy, then we might work more hours than that. Excellent. What was the easiest job you've ever worked with? Hmm. Easiest. <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever asked me that before. <laughs> um, I don't even know if I have an answer for that, but I'm I'm just thinking of some of the smaller projects that we've had to work on. And the thing is, sometimes you'll think, I, like I mentioned fence, you think a fence on a plan is just a line, right? Right. Should be really easy. But then, like I was talking about with when you go out in the field and things are different, you go out in the field and there's like a ditch and there's a hole and, you know, there's a hill and you, and there's a building in the way. And so that I've ever had a super easy project. I think they all have their challenges and, um, you know, they're all interesting in their own way. And that's kind of fun, right? I mean, that's what makes it yeah. interesting and, you know, makes you want to keep working on it. I like that. Definitely. Um, so we have a poll I'm going to launch and then there's three more questions. Oh, and we have a raised hand, which is awesome. So, um, what career in airport operations interests you? So airport engineering, it's Kelly Yost. That's her job, her career. We talked about the construction part. So that was um, actually following the plans. Air traffic control, that's when you're in the tower, you're speaking to the pilots, you're checking to make sure um, it's safe to land, safe to take off. We have the fixed base operation management. So those are the people that are usually in the buildings. Um, they're organizing where planes are parking and uh, making sure the airport's safe. We have wildlife management, which you may not think of, but that's making sure there's not like a deer on the runway or birds in your landing area. And then there's also emergency management. You know, if there's an unfortunate accident, there's a whole team that focuses on that. So I'm going to launch this poll. If you have any questions about that, feel free to ask them. And um, we'll see what we get. What's most interesting to you? Uh, in the meantime, Kelly, we have another question from Lydia. 
What was one of your favorite airports to design or favorite project you did in your job? Hmm. I would say at Grand Rapids, Gerald R. Ford International Airport, that that picture of the business jet, that was a brand new site. It was a just grass when I first went out there. And that's not always what we get to do. A lot of times we're fixing pavement that's already there. So this was a new site. I When I first walked it, it was just grass. And then at the end, you saw the picture. Yeah, it looked really great. So was that nice because you, you had like a clean piece of paper, <laughs> a clean slate? Oh, I think. Um, oh, am I muted? I yep, muted? you're back. You're back. There you are. Okay. okay. Yeah, it was just, it was an interesting project because it was a brand new site. And then to see it completed at the end and to see the airplanes coming in there, it was, some, it was a, you know, there wasn't a lot going on on that side of the airport. So it's a whole brand new area and it's going to keep developing now, now that that area is, is kind of built up. So just a, a different and interesting project that I really enjoyed working on. And I was the project manager for that. So it was, it was a fun one. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I'm seeing the polls coming in. Ooh, we have 70% for air traffic control. Uh, 14% for fixed-based operation management. And 14% for emergency management so far. Oh, we have airport. Nobody wants to be an airport engineer? I know. What I happens? I didn't spell it very well, I guess. No, I, I, there's still polls coming in. We have some more options here. Um, we have one more question for you. And I have to say the questions have been coming in. Uh, lots of questions. This is great. Uh, do you ever use input or feedback from pilots and air traffic control? We do. Uh, we definitely do. I'd say, um, especially air traffic control. Um, at Detroit Metro, we would have meetings with them pretty regularly to talk about how are we going to do construction and keep aircraft moving because the construction needs to happen, but we can't say no flights. We can't say Delta, you can't have any flights today because we have to do construction. So we have to work with them and talk about how we're going to make that happen. And, and so there's definitely a lot of interaction with them. Excellent. And does that mean that sometimes a lot of the construction takes place later at night or, um, you know, sometimes. change, do they change flights for construction a little bit? Like, okay, all, you know, ground stop at a certain amount of time, ground start at another time. Yep, definitely. Sometimes we're only allowed to work at night. Sometimes we have to phase projects where we can only do a part of it um, during, you know, for three months or there's a limit on the amount of time you can work in an area. If we got to shut down a runway, we got to shut down a runway and then they just have to figure out, you know, are there other runways that they can use? The really difficult ones are airports that only have one runway that are commercial service because a lot of times you have to come in at night do what you need to do and then put it back so that they can use it the next day, which is really tough. Um, so again, it goes back to that problem solving and figuring out how you're going to make it all work. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, really great questions, everybody. Oh, we have one more that just came in. Do you have to fix a runway because of, of a hole? Like if it gets like a pothole, would like a mean? pothole, yeah. Yeah. The difference is with an with a runway, you really can't have a pothole. Like that needs to be fixed right away. Um, yeah. So if you get a hole, usually um, airport has that's another job is airport maintenance. Um, they'll have to go out and and they do checks of the airport pretty much every day and checks of the pavement every day. And if they find a hole or something like that, they need to fix it right away. If it's something that becomes a problem that's just never ending and it keeps cracking and keeps getting holes, that's when we come in with a bigger project and try to fix the entire thing. Very nice. So we're going to switch gears a little bit towards our activity. So you can all start getting your materials ready. But before we started, I wanted to make sure that you um, just kind of saw the basic structure of an airport. This is a, a legend. Um, this comes from, where did it go? Our pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge, which you can Google. It's free. 
Um, and you can really learn a lot by reading this book. Um, I wouldn't say you could read it all in one night. It's pretty big. It's pretty hefty. It's like a textbook. But um, this information's in here. And uh, Kelly, do you want to talk a little bit about how you might use the airport diagram, which is the white and black version? And then we're going to use this to create our project. Yeah, a lot of times we'll look at these diagrams to see how the airport's laid out. I, I saw in there earlier, it looks like there's a hot spot. It, so that's an uh, area and it looks like there's a circle there. So a lot of times we're trying to fix those areas and a hot spot is somewhere where there might be a conflict where you could ha you could potentially have an accident or it's a little difficult to understand the intersection. Um, usually that's something we wanna try to fix if we can. So a lot of times we'll identify those. And a lot of times those get more funding because it's a, it's a safety issue and you want to make sure that those kind of projects are top priority. So um, yeah, you can definitely, so you can see the layout of all the pavement, you can see all the buildings and you can just see um, a lot of different information about the airport on those plans. Yeah, absolutely. So you see the letters here, Charlie, Alpha, Delta, those are all, um, yeah taxiways and then here you have it's three zero left and one two right um, and then it shows you this one one seven point six so actually runways they will go to their closest whole number so this means that if you're coming in to land at this airport at one one seven point six that's actually the number that you want to be navigating on um, because that's where the runway direction is falling. It's not exactly one, two, zero, which we talked about before. Um, you get the elevation, so two, three there, but it's going to be different in certain parts. Right here is two, three, but here the elevation is two, zero. Um, and that's important because um, it tells you like, how high the land is, it's going to change your pressure. Um, it's going to change maybe the air quality if you have a really high elevation. And does that ever affect you, Kelly, um, in terms of planning? What does the elevation do? Do you level it? Things like yeah. that. Elevations are a big part of what we do and trying to make the runways meet certain standards. And like I talked about the water earlier, making the water flow away from the runway mm -hmm. right you don't want it you don't want it flowing onto the runway so it's got to flow away and so those elevations are really important and we get surveys done to get elevations for all of our projects for the most part so that we can understand what the ground looks like and are, is there a big hill that needs to be flattened mm -hmm. out or is there a hole that needs to be filled in things like that excellent so what we're going to do is we're just going to craft a runway and a simple taxiway um and then i have I have some Play-Doh. I sent Model Magic to you all because I like Model Magic a little better, um, but it's not what I had on hand. So if you have Play-Doh on hand or Sculpey on hand, you can use that too. But the important thing is we're going to be using white markings for our runway, and we're going to be using yellow markings for our taxiway. Um, and that's the main thing we'll be focusing on now. I also gave you this handout, the FAA airport marking sheet. There's a little quiz on there too. You can challenge challenge everything that you learn. Um, but I'm actually printing this and I'm gonna copy my positions and put them in the right place with you. Um, again, here are the numbers that Kelly showed us earlier on the sign and you can see the scale that sign is half of the size of your body um, at the airport, but these numbers are uh, position markings. They're going to tell you your directions. It's kind of like road maps. If you're driving down the street and you see the street name or um, the intersection name, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, we'll share our poll. Here we go. And here is my camera. I have it ready for you right here. One second. All right. So you can go ahead and get out your materials. There we go. And I'm going to get started. And Kelly, please guide us. <laughs> you, are, <laughs> you are the um, expert here. So I got some, oh. I got some earth. Is this that clean Perfect. palette you were 
<laughs> you were talking what? about yeah that's what it looked like it was although it was a little hillier it had some some ups and downs but we can we can just say this is a flat space okay. and that's a good thing well this makes it easier <laughs> flat space makes it easier and then i i got some pavement here so i'm just gonna cut a straight runway out and what kind of material would that be if it's black I'm assuming it would be some kind of tar. What do you call that? Call it asphalt. Asphalt. It's a, ah. it's a darker, it's a darker pavement, whereas concrete is the other material that we typically use, which is a little lighter. So what is your preference or what lasts longer? Oh, I don't know if I can answer that question. <laughs> it depends. Again, it depends on how big the aircraft are and you know the the runways at Detroit Metro are usually concrete. I'll say that because they have really, really large airplanes and um, it needs to be really, really thick. So their pavement sections get to be about four feet deep. So underneath that asphalt pavement, you've got stone and sand and all kinds of other things. Got it, got it. So now, okay, I'm gonna call this my runway, but I need a taxiway. I need to be able to get to the runway. Yep. So, so then you typically want to have that parallel to your to your runway, right? So your taxiway is usually a little bit narrower than your runway. Sometimes you like to have it parallel like that. Yep. Okay, like that, a little narrow. And um, yep. now why do we want to get to both ends of the runway? Do you want to help us with that? Because it depends on the, how the wind is, is uh, going that day. You might want to take off on one one direction one day and one direction a different day. So it all depends on how the wind is is going. That's right. You want to you want to have options. So then, then you gotta have connectors, right? Connectors. What do you call them? Yep. What's the form? Connector taxiways usually. Okay. All right. So a lot of times if you have a ta taxiway alpha, then you might call those alpha one, alpha two, alpha three. Right. And we don't like to have them right in the middle of the runway. Typically, the FA likes to have those kind of on the ends for the most part. Right here? So, yep, right on the end. And then that way you can get from the runway to the taxiway. And I would move it all the way to the end there. All the way to the it's end. All lined up. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So making a little box. Yep, just like that. This is great. Thanks for yeah. guiding us. No problem. Okay. So all the way to the end. I know when I try and well, when I land, we have one in the middle, but we used to have money yeah. more and they took them out. So now I know why. I never <laughs> yeah. know why they took them out because high high energy areas. You don't want an airplane very... getting out under the runway when another another airplane is either taking off or landing and they're going fast. It was very so. hard to make the first turn, but there was a second turn that was easy mm -hmm. to make. So if you miss the first turn now, you got to go all the way down <laughs> to the end. And so you could I, still you could still put another little one in there down towards the end, as long as it's not right in the center. But got it, got it. Yeah, those those hold lines are important too that you're cutting out right yeah. now because it, yep. So that tells tells them where to stop. I'm cutting this out and I'm going to actually put this right here, right? Yep. I can't, I can't quite see the top. How's that? Yeah. I'll zoom in a little bit and explain why. There we go. So the reason it's here, you'll see there's two solid stripes. And whoops, it needs to go this way. Haha. <laughs> the two solid stripes mean solid. You think you don't cross that. Right. So from this side, those two solid stripes mean you stop um, and you have to have permission to cross it. And then here it's a solid stripe, but it has a little blank space between it. That's so when you land on the runway, you know that you can cross it, get off the runway quickly without permission. Right. Yep. exactly. So we're going to put that right there. And you always want the solid on the taxiway side. Um, because yep. that, that, like I said, that's so that the taxi knows you need permission to enter that runway. Yep. And another interesting thing about those lines is they're different at different airports, depending on 
how big the airplanes are that are coming in. It depends on the elevation of the airport. There's a bunch of different things to consider on where that location of that line exactly is. Absolutely. So I have another one right here that I'm going to add to the other end. And these are just a sample of markings. There are a lot of markings um, that you can research and look up. Yeah, that, definitely. That in some of your airport um, designs, there are these little V's at the end up here. Do you want to explain what that area is? Yeah, that's usually a, a blast pad or and usually if there's, we call them chevrons. Those are typically pavements that you're not supposed to be using. So if, if you're at a big airport, um, it'll help with jet blast from the large airplanes. So when they power up their engines, there's a big blast of air that comes out. It helps to keep what? so you don't have grass there that gets blown away and doesn't blow away, blow holes into the into the ground. Wow. But usually it's a pavement that you're not supposed to be using. And it'll stop a plane, right? If the plane, for some unfortunate reason, doesn't stop all the way. Is oh, yeah. If you have EMOS, you have the, like the emergency area that's kind of like, it's almost like wet concrete. Is that what you're thinking about? Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Where they kind of stick in there. Yeah. Yeah. That's a special that's kind of construction. I was going to say, is that common or uh, very uncommon? <laughs> it's pretty uncommon, but if if an airport doesn't have safety areas are another thing that are really important. You can't have a runway right up against a road. You want to have a safety area in there a certain distance. And so if they don't have large enough safety areas, a lot of times they'll use that EMOS um, so that it's it's a different safety system instead of a safety area. Okay. All right, so putting a solid, center line in there. Solid center line on the taxiway, right? Yeah. And those are yellow because it's a taxiway. That's right. And then we have these kind of markings at the runway. Yep. Yeah. They do threshold markings at the end and then the center line for a runway is usually dashed. So it's instead of a straight saw line all the way through, it's gonna be like a dashed center line. All right, let's try and give it a nice dashed center line here. Kelly, while Annie is making those, can you talk about the area around the runway that you have to you know, consider when building the runway? Yeah, that's really, really important. We, we have to make sure that it's graded properly, that it's, um, clear and free of obstructions because if an airplane were to go off the edge of the runway or the end of a runway, you want to make sure they're safe and they're not going to hit anything. So you can't have trees, you can't have buildings. Mm -hmm. There's a certain space, safe, runway safety areas or runway object free areas. And you have to make sure that those are clear of obstructions so that if an if a aircraft were to go off of it, it would still be safe. Excellent. And if there are obstacles, those would go in the airport notams, right? Yeah, if you sometimes you'll have trees or you'll have like a light pole, you'll put obstruction lights up on a up on a pole so that you know there is an obstruction. Um, but ideally, you get as many of those out of the way as possible. Yeah, it certainly makes it a lot easier to enter the airport. That's for sure. Yeah. And Kelly, Annie earlier talked about wildlife management at airports. So maybe you can talk a little bit about what happens or how do you prevent animals from getting on the runway? Yeah, we do a lot of fencing projects. Um, airports try to use fence to keep animals out, but sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes they jump over the fence or they climb under the fence. Um, so there's other different methods. I know there was an airport here in Michigan in Traverse City that had a dog that actually worked for the airport. Oh. And this dog was very smart and he would actually chase off, you know, the geese and the birds and things like that. And that was his job. And so, you know, having a dog in the airport could be one way to, to make sure that the wildlife is staying away. 
Interesting. I didn't realize that. Yep. All right, everybody. So I'm almost finished here. You can take as much time on this as you want. Obviously, I'm a little short on our time. But see, that oh, line great. is going to go all the way to that hold short line. You would add your runway numbers here and here. Um, and we may have some other markings now. They're not on this sheet, but they will tell us um, when you're landing, they'll tell us the distance that is left on the runway. Um, you'll have some signs for that too. What about the colors of the runway at night, Kelly? Oh yeah, as far as the lighting, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, and you'll see, typically you'll see white light um, on runways, except for at the end, sometimes you'll just see yellow lights when you, so it tells you you're getting towards the end of the runway. And, um, and then on your, here, are the ahead. taxi lights? Taxi lights are usually blue. So if you ever drive by an airport at night and you look at it from the road or wherever you're driving by, you'll notice a lot of blue lights and those are always on the taxiways. Excellent. Okay, so my basic design is done. Now I was going to make some hangers and the tower. So what do you do typically um, when you're designing an airport and it's at a towered airport? What do you try and do to accompany the tower? Like, where should I put it? Should I put it right in the middle? Should I put it on the side? Well, the tower, from the tower, you want to be able to see the whole airport. So you would pick a place, may not be on one, on one end or the other, but it may be more towards the middle of the airport. But you also want to be far enough away from the taxiway and the runway that it's not going to be an obstruction. Okay. So yeah, that would work. Like right around there? Yeah. Not my most artistic tower at the moment, <laughs> but uh, we are we are getting close to our, our timing. And, and do we do have a question. What do we do if we don't have your items to use? If you don't have the items, maybe you could just draw a picture. Um, you could use some markers. Um, you, you could even do a digital drawing. Like if you have an iPad here, I added a little tower hat to it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so there's lots of options, but really the idea is that you start learning the airport markings and, um, it's a great activity to learn them and think, okay, what does this mean? Why did I put this here? Well, that's the center stripe for the airplane. Why did I put this here? Well, that's, we know that our runway, uh, markings are white and that they're dashed. So you could use markers. I mean, you can really use anything you want. These are just suggested materials. And that goes with all of my proje projects. If you don't have the materials, you know, you can still learn as we go along. Um, and maybe there's something you really want to try and you can maybe get the materials later. We'll put this on YouTube so you can always do this again later. Um, so yeah, here I could put my hanger. I mean, like I said, what's really cool about the model magic is you can use some... Um, you can make some of that elevation, like you could make some hills and uh, make it set in and deal with some other problems to figure out. Um, so there's a lot you can do. Um, the other thing you can use the model magic for is to actually make a little airplane um, and test it out. Go through the motions here and see, hey, does my airplane, do I remember what this is? Uh, that's to help me stop before I take on the runway. So here we go. Well, this is going to be a high wing and apologies for, uh, the fast artwork. <laughs> it takes great. time to make an airport, right? <laughs> yeah. Here is my rudder and then I'll have to get, um, some elevators. All right, everybody. Well, we have, uh, just one more minute, so I'm going to switch back over and we're going to do one more poll. There we go. After our airport design challenge. So um, just so you know, if you're really interested in airport design, the FAA has a challenge on Minecraft where you can go into Minecraft, you sign up, um, scan the QR code right there, right here, and check it out. Um, this is for you. This is a challenge where you design a whole airport, just like Kelly would on CAD, right? And yep. um, 
you may enter to win. You work with a team, you go through a whole process. So we really encourage you to check this out. This will also be on the Aviation for Girls app. And I have one more quiz for you. This is a pop quiz we'll end the night with, which is what color are taxi markings? So let's see if we can figure this out. Are they pink, blue, yellow, white, or green? All right, I see it coming in. I see it coming in. And we'll go to that poll so you can read the question there. All right, Mo, we have two more people that can answer the question. What color are taxi markings? Let's see. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. So most of us did answer with the correct answer, which is yellow. Taxi markings are yellow. But I also saw one person say blue. And that's actually not wrong because the lighting is Light. blue <laughs> at night. So that is a marking. Typically, though, when we refer to markings, they're the items that are on the pavement. And the lighting colors, which you see are different, um, are the, on the sides, the edge of the taxiways. All right. Excellent job, everybody. Um, well, we're so thankful to have all of you and um, great, great questions. Kelly Yost, I am so uh, interested in airport design and the operation. Mm -hmm. I've learned so much from you. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right, everybody. We will see you in, let's see, May. Um, see you again in May. I hope you join our next Engage e Learning. And um, if you have any questions, you can always email us at aviationforgirls at wai.org. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you again, Kelly Yost. For Thank you. Our expert. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Kelly Murphy for helping and guiding the way always. <laughs> Bye everybody. Bye.